guys, welcome back. This is Deepika from MyTutorialRack.com. Now in this tutorial, we will talk about how can you expose an Apex class as a REST web service. So if you, if you remember when we were talking about SOAP web services, we saw that in order to expose a SOAP web services, you have to use the keyword global. And then you also, we talked about when you have to use it, the web service keyword and stuff like that, right? The same rules we are going to talk about what do we need to do when we have to create a REST web service means you have to expose your Apex class as a REST web service. Now you can expose your Apex classes and methods so that external applications can access your code. So if ever you wanted an external system to talk to Salesforce, and they wanted to get some data from Salesforce. If you have a web service, that's what they're going to call. So they can call from the external system. They can call into Salesforce and they can access the data once they have been authenticated properly. So and your application through the rest architecture. So this is how you can either use them via SOAP service or you can do via rest service as well. So in, if you're creating or if you're exposing your Apex class as a REST service, then you have to use this at the rate REST source annotation. This is used to expose your class as a REST resource. So whenever you're going to say at the rate REST resource, you're going to provide what is the URL and you have to use that value in order to call that service. Inside of the class, the methods that you declare, you have to use the method uh, annotations like HTTP POST, HTTP GET, etc. Now, there are different kinds of annotations that are there for the in the REST architecture. So let's go one by one to these annotations. So the first annotation that we have is the HTTP DELETE. So as the name indicates, this HTTP DELETE annotation is used at the method level. Okay, you can't put this at the class level this annotation is used at the method level and you're going to say something like at the rate http delete this is the annotation and what is the purpose of this this method is called when an http delete request is sent so from our postman when we call a delete request okay when we go ahead and choose the delete method that's when this method will be called and it was used to delete the specified resource. So if you want to delete something on the server or if you want to delete a record, that's when you're going to use this at the rate HTTP delete annotation. So HTTP delete annotation is used at the method level. First of all, then it is used to delete something from the server. Okay, if you want to delete a record or a bunch of records, etc. This is when you're going to use the HTTP delete on the method. And whenever you're going to make a delete request. So if you go to postman and if instead of get method, you choose a delete method, it will automatically call the method, which is annotated with HTTP delete annotation. Another thing is in order to use this annotation, your Apex method must be defined as global and static. So you have to make sure that your method is global means it can be accessed outside of Salesforce and it is also used with the static keyword. Static means that you don't need an instance of that class in order to call that method. So this is your first annotation. The next annotation that we have is called as the Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. It's called the HTTP GET annotation. Now, what is this HTTP GET annotation? So in order to, you're going to write this annotation on a method, okay? It can only be used on a method. You can't use it at a class level. That is important point to remember. HTTP GET annotation is used at the method level and enables you to expose an Apex method as REST resource. So if you want to expose your Apex method as a REST resource means somebody outside of the Salesforce can access that. That is when you're going to use this method. This method is called when an HTTP GET request is sent. So let's say from your client or from your external application, you are making a GET request. When you make a GET request, the method with the at the rate HTTP GET annotation will be the one that will be invoked. 
So I repeat here, the HTTP GET annotation is used at the method level and enables you to expose your Apex method as a REST resource means you can call that method from an external application like Postman. Now, this method is called when an HTTP GET request is sent and returns the specified resource. So it doesn't make any changes, not doesn't make any changes on the server. It is only going to retrieve a record okay so if you want to retrieve some information from salesforce you basically pass in the id if you want to get the list of all the records list of all the account records or any case records etc when you want to retrieve something not creating a new record not deleting a record when you just want to retrieve some information from salesforce then you're going to use this at the rate http get annotation so that method will only return you a record or a bunch of records etc in order to use this http get annotation you have to declare your method as global and static so you have to make sure that the method that are using this annotation are global and static you can't put this annotation on a public method and a non-static method another thing is the methods which are annotated with this http get are also called if the http request uses the head request method so either you make a get request from your client or from your external application or you make a head request so if you remember there is a method called head on the postman when you make either of these that's when the method with the http get annotation will be called so http get annotation method is can be used at a method level first of all the second point is it is used to retrieve a record or bunch of records. It is used to retrieve information. I would say it doesn't do any deletion or doesn't do any update, doesn't create any new record. It is just used to retrieve information. This method will be invoked when you make a get request or you make a head request. So there are the times when this method will be invoked. Now the next annotation that we have here is the HTTP patch annotation. As the name indicates, if you want to update an existing record, let's say from an external application, you wanted to say that, hey, the phone number or the card information of the customer has changed and you wanted to pass in that information to update it into Salesforce, then in that case, you will use a method like HTTP patch. So the purpose is to update a existing record not create a new one this is an important point to remember you can't create a new record with the http patch you can only update you can see here this method is called when an http patch request is sent and updates the specified resource so it is assuming that you are only going to use this method if you want to update an existing record in salesforce the HTTP patch annotation can also be only used at the method level. And if you want to expose your Apex method as a REST resource, then you have an option to choose this one. Now, when this method would be invoked, when you're making a HTTP patch request from your client or from your external application or from Postman. So whenever you're doing these, that's when this method with this annotation will be called. And in order to use this annotation you have to make sure that the method is global and static that is the important point so all these annotations can only be used with the methods which are de declared as global and static now the next thing that we have here the another annotation that we have is the http post and we have seen it in the previous tutorials what is the purpose of this http post now the http post annotation is used at the method level and if you want to create a new record okay if you want to create a brand new record which doesn't exist in salesforce and if you want to to create a record that's when you're going to annotate the method with this annotation http post and when this method will be invoked when you will be making a post request from your external application or from your postman etc so that's when the http post method will be invoked another point is the method that you're going to annotate with this http post annotation that method needs to be global 
and static. Okay, that is a very important point that you need to remember. All the methods need to be global and static if you want to expose them as a REST resource. And this method is called when a HTTP POST request is sent and it is used to create a new resource. This is the another annotation that you can use. One more annotation that we have here, here is the HTTP PUT annotation. Now this PUT annotation is used either to create a new record and it can also be used to update an existing record. So there is a difference between POST, PUT and patch and this is a question which is asked by a lot of interview sometimes or the employers post is used to create a new record put is used to create or update a record patch is used to update a existing record so here http put annotation is used at the method level and it enables you to expose your method as a rest resource and this method is called means it will be only invoked when you will be making a HTTP put request from your external application or from your client. So when you're making a HTTP put request, that's when this method will be called and it is used to either update or create the specified resource. So if you want to create a new record, you can use the HTTP put method. Or if you want to update the an existing record, you can use the HTTP put. So you can say that HTTP put is a combination of post plus patch. Okay, that is what it is. So basically, you can create a new record and you can update a new record as well. Then you have to only use this with a method which is declared as global and static. Now, the next thing that we have here is I just wanted to give you how does a REST resource looks like. So this is a class that I've, uh, I've taken a snapshot of. So you can see here I have used the keyword global with the class. This is the name of that class and I'm using this annotation at the rate REST resource means I'm exposing this as a REST service. We didn't do anything like that in the case of SOAP service, but in the case of REST, you have to use this annotation at the rate REST resource, and then you have to provide a URL mapping means anytime a request come for account, this is what will be called and you pass in some information or ID or whatever. So then this is the whenever you're making a request from your external application, it can be Postman or another external system. And if you are making a call like salesforce.com services, slash account and then you provide the account id then this is the resource that will be called now you can make you will have option to choose a get request you will have an option to choose either a post request or a put request or a delete request or a patch request right so if you are making a get request from your external system, then this method will be called the one which is annotated with at, at the rate HTTP get. That is the method that will be invoked. If you're making a post request from your external application, then this post method will be called. If you're making a delete request from your external application, then this method will be called. So depending upon what request type it is, the corresponding method will be invoked, right? In one particular class, you can't have two methods declared with the HTTP GET annotation. Then it will get confused when you're making a GET request, which method to invoke if there are another method with the same annotation. So when you're making a GET request, the method which has the at the rate HTTP GET annotation that will be invoked when you're making a POST request, then the method with at the rate HTTP POST annotation that will be invoked. If you're making a DELETE request, then the method with the at the rate or at, I'm so used to saying at the rate, I apologize, but just an at symbol here. And then if you, the method with this annotation will be called. This is how you create a REST resource. And you have seen in the previous examples, how to expose your Epix class as a SOAP service. So these are some rules to follow in order to expose your class as a REST resource. Now, if I go back to my Postman, 
you can see here these are the different methods that I can do I can call a get request I can call a post put patch delete these are the different methods that I can call from my post client and based on which the method I have chosen, the corresponding method with that annotation will be called from the Salesforce. So this is an overview of the REST resource, how to expose your class as a REST resource. In the next tutorial, we are going to create a custom REST resource and we will call that custom REST resource from this postman. And how to do that, we will see it in the next tutorial. Thank you.